Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're going to be looking at some IBM slash Lenovo servers because um, I have gotten a lot of uh, comments on people getting these servers and having trouble with them and one of one of the issues people run into is that the management adapter in the server is very hard to get to especially if you get one of the management adapters where you can actually go and remote control the server and get the the console screen of the server on your monitor far far away and um, it's a drag to get that up and running because this has this was intentionally built uh, to run on Java and well Java hasn't really aged very well let's just say that security hole on security hole on security hole has turned up and a lot of browsers does not support Java anymore um, not to be confused with JavaScript which is working perfectly but the Java we're going to be looking at um, is buggy very much so indeed so um, we're going to be playing with this server down here outside of view let's go down this one it's an IBM Lenovo X3850 model 2 it's an old server and I have gotten a lot of comments on that server it used to be a really cheap server to get it's a very expensive server to run but you got a lot of cool features in it this one has 24 cores um, on four CPUs and you can put up to 256 gigabytes of memory in this server yeah it's just cool to have a big server like that this is not the 24 7 server you're dreaming about this is the turn on and play with in the weekend server that you are dreaming about so but let's go to the computer and see what I'm up to I have moved into the computer and we're gonna go right away to a remote well I call it a jump server and uh, we're gonna be uh, trying to set up access to an RSA2 adapter on there and the same thing should go with the later versions of the IMM adapter so let's see what we got here so here I am on a virtual machine you can see that there I am doing remote desktop to that up here and um, what I have found is that Internet Explorer is the best browser to use when you're gonna be messing with your management on IBM slash Lenovo server uh, at least the older models like I have here so let's start Internet Explorer here and I just happen to have the IP number of that management adapter and it's number 208 here and the RSA adapter replies right away and RSA stands for remote supervision adapter this is number two so we're gonna log in I have uh, set this up to save the password for me so that I don't have to waste time on typing that I always recommend to set this if you are like me messing with a local server it's not as important but if you are like doing a remote session to a server that is like 100 kilometers away this might just save you that trip sometimes this remote uh, management has been seen to just stop responding or your user is, has done something weird and sometimes it will help you that uh, it will automatically kick you out after 20 minutes and you can actually go in and try again so I do recommend setting the 20 minutes uh, it's the biggest one there are you can go from 1 to 20 minutes and then there is the no timeout and that's the one that I do not recommend if you are far away from the server uh, it's way better to log in one more time and uh, drive over there to have to reset uh, something so uh, 20 minutes good continue so what we'll see here is the RSA adapter and all the features that that has uh, we can do a lot of things we can see the log files um, I have been doing a lot of locking in and out of this server so uh, that's it and we have the vital product data here the model number of the server this is the 7223 the server has the latest RSA software on it it's over here revision number 18 
and this software is from back in 2012. So this server is way out of production and way out of warranty and way out of, well, I don't think they patch it much anymore. This is just a server that is fun to play around with. Um, you should probably not use this for production. And there is more or less no more fixes coming up for it. Yeah, there is that. So the thing that we are really gonna be messing with is this remote control here. And if we punch that in, we will see that we get different options. Um, it talks a lot about what this is and it talks about that we need some Java to have this working. Java runtime environment, uh, plugin and stuff. And I have installed the newest Java on this jump server, so that is good-ish. Uh, one of the other ways to get this up and running without the ninja hacks that I'm gonna tricks that I'm gonna show you just in a little while is to choose an older version of Java and, and run that like before it was an issue but yeah old Java that means that you are installing a Java version with security issues it kind of sucks both ways um, what we want to do we want to remote control into the server and we want to use this single user mode so if we pick that one it will open a window um, the first time you try this, it will come up here and ask if it's okay to pop up a window and you have to approve that and stuff like that. I have approved that, so the window just pops up and I get uh, immediately I get a security thing from Java that, <laughs> well, more or less it's telling me to go fuck myself. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it has some unsigned business down here. Right? So if I press OK, Get another one. This is not okay. You're not going to be allowed to do this. Oh, bollocks. And we get two errors here. We get one here. Uh, not working. And we get one up here. Uh, same thing. Not working. What you get up here is usually that you're able to mount a ISO file on your local machine here and pass that on to the server so you can have like a boot drive that you boot from. And down here you would see the screen of the server, the console screen. So let's uh, shut this down and start to do some ninja tricks to get this up and running. So first, we need to go into the control panel of the server. Here is the control panel. And we have something called Java right there. If we go into Java, I'll just minimize this and that one. So we only have this control panel here. And there is a fan up here called security. And in security, we have a um, exception site list. And we need to put our site on there to tell Yeva that, well, that site that we are visiting, that is um, okay. Uh, we trust the security on that. And you have to do that by pressing this uh, site list. And we have to add a site. And then we have to type it, much like it, it says here. So um, I'll press HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and that was not it. And the IP number or the host name, whatever you like. Like that, I am able to add that, and it will tell me how dangerous this is, and I'll approve that. So. Okay, uh, this is about half of what we need to do. On a lot of machines, this is enough. Uh, but on the later versions of Java, well, you have to do something more. And we might just check what happens here. Let's log out, close that, start it again, go in again. If you notice, these RSA adapters are very quick and very responsive, so it's not a big drag to, uh, to check this out again. But we will probably see some different errors. This one we didn't see last time. It looks different. So if we run that. Uh, but we still don't get in. We still just get... Uh, we get another here. A permission that is not okay. And then down here we get... Another one, it tells us that Java net socket permission 92.168.1 blah blah blah. 
could not be resolved, uh, please look at this line. This looks very similar to something that we're going to be uh, putting in just a little bit. So, okay, that's not working. So we close that down. And we're going to log out and again here and close that down. So what we want to do, we want to go and edit a text file. So I need to open a new window here. Down there. Okay. On my local disk, I have a folder called Program Files, and I have this folder called Program Files x86. Both of them are something that Windows uses, and in each of them, you can just see that Java is there, and also down here, Java is there. That's because we have installed Java in a 32-bit version and Java in a 64-bit version. So uh, we actually only need to edit the one that we are using as I don't really know which one it is and uh, I might run into problems I'm just gonna edit both of them the, the file we need to go look for let's just start with the x64 bit uh, if we go into the Java folder we see the version of Java that I have installed it's not very old so go in there in here we have we have bin and we have library uh, we need to go into library and there is a folder called security we need to go in there here we have some files uh, you should think that we needed to edit this java security file mm, that's not the case we need to edit this java policy thing up here so um, i have installed this um, notepad plus plus this is really good for that um, so so um, I do recommend doing that, installing that. Uh, so let's go in here, edit, uh, right click and then edit with Notepad++. There we are. So what we need to do is to add a couple of lines here. And I have already done this because I tested this. Um, I have copied the, the lines over here. So if we edit this one, with um, notepad plus plus you can see the two lines that we need to to add and this piece of the line you will have seen before because i told you to look for that these two lines will be adding to get this up and running but i added something uh, this piece we don't need that so we're going to be removing that There, and we're just gonna take those two and we're gonna put that and I have already had this open so you can see the edit plus plus remembers the two last files that I have edited one of them is the Java on the program files and is the program files on the x86 so let's just uh, start here and we're gonna put those two lines in I'm gonna put them in uh, right down here on the top and put those in and I'm gonna try and make it look like uh, everything else I found that this works uh, if you see this line this permission thing that is exactly the same that is up here so this might not be needed I don't know I don't care it works if you put it in uh, I haven't tried not putting it in, but probably this one is enough. And of course, this is the IP number of the server that I am doing this to. So if you're using another server or if, or if you have a fully qualified host name, you would put that in there instead of this. The port number is port number 2000. If you have gone in and changed that under the RSA settings, well, you have to put in something different there. So, but we have those two. I'm gonna borrow those, put them in the clip holder there, and we are gonna save this there. It's gonna complain, it wants to be an administrator. Yes, you can do that. And it has saved, I hope. Uh, I'll just check it again, save. And we'll go in and add it on the other file as well. There. 
and we will see it as well and it's it's good to go so let's close this down and close this one down and then we'll start our internet explorer again we will go into the IP number of the server there we will log in there and we will try this remote session we still give a, a warning but now we get our remote session so now it's working and uh, I would be able to control boot this server and stuff this one has been installed with VMware ESXi 6.5.0 uh, the newest version of ESXi is not compatible with the CPUs in this server so this is probably the latest version that is able to run on that server so cool that is working uh, the port number thing is down here port assignment uh, if you have change this port number you would have to change that so let's just try this in another browser shall we we have internet we have chrome here but it's usually not let's see how far we get here okay. and this is what it looks like in chrome um we never get this up and running so it doesn't work in chrome same way um, that's a total no-go so that's why we're using Internet Explorer so close that down log off then we have Firefox and we do the same thing and we will see that we do also not get anything here so probably the same thing same problem with these two um, I'm sure someone out there knows how exactly to do this. Please do leave that in the comments below so that everybody else and me will be able to do this on other browsers than just Internet Explorer. So that's the way you're right now able to go in and remotely manage your server and get the console screen from the server onto your local PC or jump server or what you're using. And um, it's a really neat feature when it works but it's irritating that it's this difficult to set up on the newer servers they um, they have updated the firmware for the rsa uh, which is now called the imm so you get other options and it's usually a little bit easier you don't have to edit those files you just need to put the server ip in the exception list if you have some ninja tricks how to do this please remember to leave them in the comments below this is very helpful for everybody who is using these servers that would be very helpful for everyone thank you um, also please consider checking out my patreon where i every week give you guys a little bit extra on what's going on behind the scenes what i'm up to what is happening um, but thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye-bye.